now my pleasure, without further ado, to introduce a woman who needs no introduction, a woman who I like to introduce as my representative, our representative, Barbara Lee. States Legal Foundation, you've been such a strong voice calling for nuclear disarmament for, what, three decades now. And so let me just congratulate Jackie and Andy for literally spending a half-life. Thank you, a half-life. I know how old you are now, Jackie. A half-life. Working for peace and for justice. Yes, Jackie, I was part of it. As you were talking, I was reminiscing again, thinking about the, was it the same freeze movement that we, many of us were involved in then? And we thought that by now, by now, <laughs> by now that the dangers of a nuclear arms race would have been understood by the world's leaders. And here we are again, continuing to fight. But thank God for Jackie, for Andy, and for the Western States Legal Foundation. Thank you. <laughs> and let me just say, is Mayor Kwan still here? I just want to thank, thank you, Jean, for your tremendous leadership. She's unbelievable. Thinks globally, acts locally. You know, we have to have a mayor who gets it on all fronts, and, and Mayor Kwan certainly does. And so I just have to salute you and thank you and just say I know what a tough job it is being, being mayor of this great city, but we're moving forward, and thank you again. Let me uh, just say how excited I am to be here uh, with these two special guests who have made history, made history through their fearless, and I mean fearless, stances for global peace and security. First of all, our Pentagon Papers whistleblower, journalist, and activist, Daniel Ellsberg, who I always think of, Daniel, I just have to say to you, Especially now in the midst of all of these storms that we're dealing with. His spirit and his brilliance really guides so many of us in Congress to hopefully do the right thing regardless of the consequences. So thank you. Thank you very much. So much. And of course my very good friend and comrade, Congressman Dennis Kucinich, who has retired but who, while in Congress, and now in this new chapter of his life, continues to remind us that peace is possible. This celebration not only reminds us of your past achievements in monitoring nuclear and other related weapons programs, as well as analyzing these weapons' disastrous effect on environmental, political, and human security. But also we're reminded of the challenges that lie ahead, as Jackie laid out, in our continued fight to eradicate nuclear weapons from the face of the earth. Woo. From All the right. face of the earth. And so I just want to thank you again 
for this final work to abolish nuclear weapons and to encourage public review of nuclear technologies and to ensure the responsible <coughs> management of nuclear waste. Truly, you know, our future really relies on it. And when it comes to building a better future, let me just say that our speakers tonight have spent much of their lives calling for a world free of nuclear weapons. I've been to Hiroshima, uh, and it was a very painful yet very powerful moment for me. And, and I tell you, you know, working from non-proliferation and wiping nuclear weapons from the face of this earth, getting rid of them, regardless of what country, we're talking about all countries, we need to get rid of our stockpile here. We've got too many nuclear weapons in the United States. And, and so we have to begin here at home. And it's just, we do. <laughs> Your efforts in Congress to do that, Senator Mark, uh, Senator, almost, Congressman Markey <laughs> and others are really working very hard to do that. Dennis Kucinich um, is a person who also continues now in this chapter of his life to work on non-proliferation efforts. And I'm so glad that he's here in the heart and soul of the peace movement, right here in Oakland, California. I've known Dennis for a long time. And let me tell you, I have been proud to stand with Dennis on so many occasions with regard to so many issues important to our planet. Now, I know what it feels like to sometimes be a lone voice uh, speaking <laughs> out for our Constitution. Working with Dennis, I have been with him on that floor when he was the only one, the only one debating the constitutional responsibilities of members of Congress, your representatives. Dennis is admired over the world, throughout the world for his steadfast courage, wisdom, and tenacity when it comes to consistently champion progressive policy. And Dennis has helped me, and I've got to tell you, he's helped me build support to repeal this authorization to use force, which is one of those authorizations cited now in these targeted assassinations through the use of drones. And we're trying to repeal that resolution. We're trying to repeal it. And when Dennis was in Congress, he worked day and night to help me build co-sponsorships for that. And for that, I am deeply grateful. We should be deeply grateful for that. You remember now that Dennis was elected to the Cleveland City Council at the young age of 23. And he was the winner of the city's mayoral election at age 31. Dennis was also one of the youngest, probably the youngest mayor of our, in our nation's history. He's been an Ohio State Senator, has run his own communications and marketing firm, and also served eight terms as a member of Congress where I enjoyed his wise counsel and his friendship. During his time in the House, it was from 1997 to 2013, Dennis showed excellent leadership on the House Committee on Education and Workforce, as well as oversight and government reform. He showed determination, and real determination. If you remember, we brought him right here to Oakland as a two-time candidate for the Democratic nomination for president in 2004, 2008. He had a lot of support here in my own congressional district. I had to tell Dennis, he, he, you all helped Dennis tremendously. And you know, in this day and time of this unfortunate effort we have to engage in and raising money. Dennis raised more money here running for president than anyone, so I just want to say to you, thank you. But Dennis showed a lot of courage through his steadfast demands to hold the Bush administration accountable for its very horrendous failures. Dennis and I have also worked side by side, and this was difficult in putting together the Out of Iraq Caucus. But Dennis helped us put an end to that war that should have never been fought based on lies, based on no weapons of mass destruction. Dennis helped us bring our young men and women home 
It was too long getting there, but we did it. And Dennis was part of that very bold effort. Also, Dennis worked to help us begin to end this war in Afghanistan. We worked so hard, and he has helped me tremendously on calling for an expedited withdrawal out of Afghanistan, not in 2014, but now. We believe that our troops should be brought home in a safe and orderly fashion today, and that can be done. Dennis has helped us do that. And he's always someone that I know who really gets it when it comes to looking at real alternatives to war, violence, and intolerance. I know that his work on nuclear nonproliferation and his urgent public calls to abolish nuclear weapons will continue to be heralded by future generations as a voice of reason in an era of unprecedented militarization. Now Dennis, on a personal level, Dennis and his beautiful wife Elizabeth, who I know very well in Washington, D.C., they have worked to raise the consciousness about healthy living, healthy foods, why it makes sense to be a vegan, and I tell you, they, they talk to me all the time about this now. I'm not there yet, but I tell you, not only is Elizabeth beautiful, but she is brilliant. And so they continue to encourage many of us who we know personally to get our lives together on a personal level. And so I wish Dennis well in the next chapter of his life as he remains a fearless voice, reminding us all that peace is patriotic. And along with my colleagues, I will continue to work with Dennis, continue to make sure, and I know you want to hear this because we're working on this on the inside now, that there is a sustained call for a Department of Peace and or peace building. We're going to make sure that happens in Dennis' honor and your honor. Our country needs peace, the world needs peace, and so we're going to make sure that we rev this up in Dennis's honor, and that will be his legacy, a Department of Peace. And so let us give, give Dennis, as he comes forward, a resounding 13th Congressional District, East Bay, Alameda County, and an Oakland Round of applause, and let's thank Dennis for his tremendous leadership and for what he has done for the progressive movement.